Hey guys, welcome back to Garden and Grease. We got an exciting shipment today of fruit trees. We ordered our fruit trees from Stark Brothers and I don't only order from them, but last year we got a couple fruit trees from them and they did great. So we ordered some more this year. All right, so I'm really excited for these fruit trees. This is the second week of April, so it's perfect timing to get them in the ground. Let's see what we have though. All right. So our fruit trees are packaged in a box, obviously, and in this plastic, and they've got some wet uh, paper. It's not really wrapped around the roots very well. Last year, they were individually wrapped, and they have plastic bags individually around the roots. So some of these are pretty dry. I'm not thrilled about that, but we're gonna put them in water. So let's see what we have gotten in here. We have three fruit trees. Let's pull this smaller one out. We have the Moore Park Apricot Standard Rootstock. And that one is the one that's pretty dry here, more than the others. It's, slide, it's alive, yep. Yeah. So we're gonna stick that in water, but it's a little larger than a whip. I think these are two years old when they send them to you. But that's a really a nice. Larger than a whip, huh? You're an well, they call them whip. a whip. Oh, They're a little they? skinny ones. They're only a one year old as a whip. Yep. All right. Uh, I'm going to put this in water right away. I brought a bucket out before even opening this. And I'm just going to put those roots down there in that water. There was some leftover soil that that's kind of floating. No, no, no. I actually mixed it with uh, hot water. To cool it, to warm it up a little. It's My room temperature. A toe there. <laughs> so we got our Moor Park apricot, which I got it on the standard root stock. And I don't even know if they have it on a dwarf or semi dwarf, but these don't get massive. They'll, they'll, still, they'll still get quite a few feet. And I'll put on the screen um, the mature size of one with no pruning, but we'll prune to keep it at a um, exactly the right size we want so we can easily harvest all of our fruit trees next we have oh and these are beautiful wow look at these we have the bartlett pear the bartlett pear semi dwarf and the i don't know how to pronounce it andrew um pear semi dwarf I ordered these two pear trees because for one, they were sold on sale as a pear called, I think, perfect pear, you know, a pun intended, a pear tree, uh, because they pollinate each other. So uh, trying to find the perfect pollinators is really important. And they actually sold these as a pear for pollinators. And these are gonna go in the cottage garden. These are actually a lot bigger than I thought they were going to be when I ordered them and started making plans. I was going to espalier them, but um, they are quite a bit larger than expected. And uh, I might have to rethink that plan. I prefer to have espaliered something more um, skinnier and uh, with less growth on it. These are just so darn beautiful. I don't know if I could bring myself to do that. <laughs> so uh, let's check out these roots. And these are pretty dry too. They didn't do a good job at keeping that um, wet paper around them. That must have been part of their uh, garden fabric that they use. But you know, um, the way they cut these roots, so we just did a video about a week or so ago on um, trans planting a mature fig tree and you cut a lot of the root out. Well, that's exactly what they do when they send you bare root trees or plants is they cut the root and they live just fine after cutting a root. So it's no big deal. I'm gonna put him in water. I might need to get some bigger bucket here. 
Like a five gallon bucket. Okay. Yeah, that's probably what I'm gonna have to do. This one looks like it was wrapped a little bit better. More of that garden fabric on there. Jeffy. So they have a lot of um, main roots here, but not a lot of feeder roots on these. That one had more. Okay. I'm going to end up getting a five gallon bucket to put these in so that way everybody's nice and wet. So let me go do that now. Last year, we ordered this Stanley plum tree from Stark Brothers as well. And he did amazing. I have trimmed multiple feet off of him last summer and we gave him a really good pruning just last month. And he now has his first blooms. These are wide open and these are working on opening within the next day or two. All of these will be open. Seems as though, you know, he just has the blooms on this one stem here. And that was one that um, he had this stem, they had pruned it to here at the uh, nursery, you know, at Stark Brothers, they pruned that stem to here. And this is the stem that is putting off the flowers. So that is awfully beautiful. A whole lot of beautiful fresh growth coming off of him. All right, so I have our three new fruit trees uh, soaking in water. I'm gonna leave them in here anywhere from 30 minutes to, you know, two hours, something like that. And um, while I get some sites prepared and some holes dug, Guys, their trunks are really thick and sturdy. I uh, really wasn't prepared for them to be this well-developed. Uh, I've never grown a pear tree before and I just kind of thought it was gonna deliver looking more like a stick with a couple little limbs coming off, but these are pretty darn well-developed. I'm trying to rethink my uh landscape plan for them you know these will not grow near our black walnut trees all right guys life goes on and these sat overnight <laughs> you know in all reality you should be letting these sit for like four hours anyway in water especially since these roots were pretty wet it started raining yesterday and it rained all night but at least now the ground is soft. <laughs> All right, so we've decided that we're still gonna espalier our pear trees. So we have a small front yard and I'm gonna let them get an eight foot span. So four feet to each side of the main trunk. So I'm gonna measure out what that's gonna look like on the front of each side of our steps going to our front porch. And I'm gonna put them 18 inches away from the structure itself. Um, a lot of information says uh, six to 10 inches, but I want to put about a 12 inch, just stone, uh, I have a plan. <laughs> You'll see one day when we get to it. I went 18 inches away from the structure. I also worry about roots pushing against the structure of the house. And um, that is still a concern, but we'll see what happens. Here's wishing for the best. Okay, we have the uh, Bartlett pear. It's gonna go to the right side of our steps and the Ann Jewel pear is gonna go on the left. I didn't really have I didn't put a lot of thinking into that. I just grabbed one. Now you'll see on the trunk that this is where the graft is. The cut and the graft. We want the cut part here facing away from the direct sunlight. South is directly that way. Well, kind of that way. We want this facing towards the house. So that's how we're going to put it in. House is here that 
and I'm not putting anything special in the hole, just a handful of some slow release fertilizer. Um, I'm just gonna throw some, a handful of Biotone starter slow release in the hole, and that's all that's going in the hole. The rest of it is just going to be its native soil. You can see where the root came out of the ground at the nursery. You can literally see a color difference in the bark here. So we're going to bury it to exactly that same spot. I don't like the little bit of that on there. Doesn't look healthy, but anyway. So we're gonna bury to exactly the same spot. We're gonna water him in. I'm gonna give him more water than that, but honestly, we have a pretty rainy weekend and I think the rain's gonna take care of that for us. But let me take you a little closer. All right, so our, where it was actually buried at the um, nursery was there. I went a little higher my soil's down here because it's going to sink. I'm going to put more soil in, in here. And I also want to be able to put some mulch over it. I'm not going to ever mound mulch up on my tree. That, that will cause disease, rot. So I wanted it a little bit higher than the soil. I knew I was going to have some sink here. So that way I could put some more soil and a little bit of mulch around it and I'm actually going to top around it with a little bit of uh, aged manure. We use alpaca manure, whatever you have. Um, I'm going to put it around here, not up against it, but out here to help promote the feeding habit of the roots to pull away from the hole. It's worth pointing out that I do not have my trellising structure put up. <laughs> in a perfect world, I would have already had that prepared. I'm kind of glad I didn't. These trees are a little too old and uh, matured to, for the optimal espalier starting. Uh, you pretty much just want to whip like a one year to start with. This is two years plus, it's, it's a two year old tree. And I didn't really think that one through properly when I ordered him. What I'm going to do is allow this to get some growth this spring and choose the growth I want. Or I'm going to do two tiers in this first year. Generally, you want to just lop it off where you want your first tier to start. And then take whatever grows and, and start guiding it. But um, I don't want to do that much damage. Not a lot of growth down here and I am going to make a heading cut on the top um, to promote those lateral growths this year but I'm going to wait for a dry weekend to do that I want a couple dry days to make a big cut like that Below that, so I can put some mulch 
looks like with some water. Check back on these later on. They're turning settled pretty good. And we're gonna put some alpaca poop on here. Some um, alpaca manure. And then we'll make a video when we do put up our guidelines and start to espalier these um, pear trees so that you don't miss that video. Uh, hit that notification bell and subscribe. Guys, I don't know if you can see how red in the camera <laughs> this clay is. It's, I can form it into balls mush it i could make sculptures out of this i cleared out a chunk of the older forsythia there's so much back here i am cleared an area dug a hole now mind you some people don't like that i'm cutting the forsythia out we have a, a massive thicket when it touches down, when these branches touch down, they root. All of these are brand new forsythia that have rooted. They probably did this like last year. These really old ones, I'm cutting off the oldest wood and, and branches go in the directions I don't like. And uh, I don't feel bad about it. Look, there's another new one, a new one, a new one. All right, guys, I did the same exact thing with my apricot back here as I did with my pears, but I'm doing it towards the back of the property. Let me step back and give you an idea of where I'm talking about. Okay, this is the end of my sidewalk that goes to nowhere where I have the two cheapest raised beds you could possibly ever make. And I put this apricot tree, you can't even see it right now with all the prosythia. You see the white tag. All right, here we go, apricot tree. I made a mistake earlier and I said, oh, it won't get too big. Actually, without pruning, it'll get 15 to 20 feet tall. They didn't sell it on a semi-dwarf or dwarf stock. It's only sold on standard, at least through Stark Brothers. Um, but it is a grafted, the same as the others. I put the graft going north, uh, where it's going to be shaded. And that's the purpose of that. You want it shaded. Um, this big log will one day be out of here. Um, but that's where I put it. This is going to be more of a food forest area. All of this we're working on slowly integrating in edible foods with ornamentals. It is the first tree in this portion of the food forest. The first fruit tree going in. We put in a fig tree right here, transplant from somebody else's property right down the road. Watch the video on that. I'll link that in. And we have Stan right here. He is our Stanley Plum and he is in bloom. We also have a uh, Chicago hardy fig that is potted up. Uh, he's starting to transition back out and actually he already has fruit on him. Guys, if you like this video and want to keep seeing more, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell icon and that like button. Thank you for watching Garden and Grease. Have a good day, guys.